Greetings, cats and kittens. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back to Libby's Lullabies. Today, I am going to be reading Miguel and the Grand Harmony by Matt De La Pena with illustration by Ana Ramirez. There's a role to that R, but my tongue doesn't want to cooperate. A thousand apologies. This story was inspired by Disney Pixar's animated movie, Coco. So if you enjoy Coco, you are going to love this story as much as I do. So I want you to sit back or lie down. Either way, relax and enjoy the story. First comes the sound. A single string plucked or a note blown or beat wrapped. And suddenly, I am. Where there is music, there is color. And where there is color, there is life. Oh, these illustrations are magnificent. I roam this vibrant city, determined to keep gray at bay. La musica, I hear their hearts beckon. We need you. To create a grand harmony, I need them too. Here I am tucked inside the buzz of wedding bells, the band shifting into ballad, and every hand linked around the glowing bride and groom. Here I am at a pet Pueblo Quinceanera, swaying along with the static key song, as a fresh-faced girl lifts a tiara onto her head here I am huddled over an open cemetery plot, breathing life into the quiet reflections of loved ones and the weeping beauty of a single violin. Today I fall upon a trio of musicals tuning their instruments. They laugh from their bellies and wave to passers-by. They shoo away, a stray dog. A fourth musica steps to a trash bin holding a busted guitar. She was good to me, he says. Until you sat on her, his friend replies. More laughter as the man tosses the ruined instrument and returns to his crate. He thumbs the nylon strings of a new guitar and I ride the rhythms across the plaza. By sundown, the alleyways are packed with people and I leap from song to song. On warm nights like this, I am the city and the city is me. But just as my surge of sound is lifting toward the twilight, an old woman barges out of a shoe shop. Stop that music, she shouts. You upset Mama Coco. A startled guitar player fumbles for his favorite hat, a trumpeter. Hurrying to put away his instrument, knocks over a box of mismatched nails. Before I am sucked back into nothingness, I notice a boy. He holds a broom in one hand, a dustpan in the other. And while everyone else in the shop is busy waving away most musicals, the boy's eyes are glued to their guitars. There's music in his heart. He turns to look for me but I'm already lost into a colorless void. The following morning, I rise with the crowing roosters and race from place to place. But all day my thoughts keep returning to the boy. I abandon a flock of songbirds to follow the thudding paws of a trotting dog. Halfway down the alley, I pause to peer inside the window of the shoe shop, but the boy isn't there. I sigh and watch his family busily making shoes. There is a kind of harmony about their rhythmic work. They are doing what they love. I'm about to retreat into the whistling wind when I hear a faint rustling coming from above. I climb these subtle sounds like a rope up to the roof where I discover a secret. Inside, the boy is moving around the antenna of a tiny TV. I redirect his radio waves 
so that an old musical performance comes in clearly. The boy stares, transfixed. Then he pops a tape into an old VCR and hits record. He picks up his broom and holds it like a guitar, moving his fingers along invisible frets. When the song ends and the crowd begins to cheer, the boy rewinds back to the music. Miguel, a man calls out from below. Ya vente a comer. The boy stops the tape and covers the TV and hurries out of the little attic for dinner. The following day, I trail him to the plaza where a band of street musicians is performing. Dante, vamos, he calls to his dog. And the two of them wiggle their way to the front. This close to the music, the boy's face comes alive. He belongs to the sound. But just as I'm about to whisper my name into his ear, his abuelita appears. She shoes away the stray and pulls the boy back through the crowd by his elbow. Mijo, stay away from the mariachi, she tells him. I know, but do you want to upset Mama Coco? He shakes his head and follows her back to the shop. Sometimes the world can seem like a misplayed note. Sometimes colors fade and smear. I sulk inside a nearby cafe where an old man plucks my sadness on a tired ringuito. What is a ringuito? I remember another boy from long ago. He used to sit alone and write songs long into the night. And when he became a man, he sang lullabies to his baby girl. I'll never forget the bright colors emanating from their eyes. That is why I'm here. I pictured the boy from the shoe shop again. La Musica exists in the hearts of humans. If I can't lead this child to his passion, then what is my purpose? I'm pulled out of my thoughts by the stray dog, who's sniffing around the floor by my feet. That's when it occurs to me. I don't have to do this alone. I bend to whisper a new plan into Dante's ear. The next morning is crisp and cloudless and smells of destiny. As soon as Dante senses my presence, he tears the broom out of the boy's hands and takes off. He races through the alleys, into the plaza, and up to the trash bin, where he barks and howls and paws at the side. Dante! The boy shouts out of breath. What's wrong? And then he sees it. During his shift at the shoe shop that night, I wrap my arms around a pair of crackling katoras until the boy comes out to investigate. The birds scurry, but not before the boy has discovered the scattered nails. He slips them into his pocket, sensing he's not alone. Over the next several days, I track a light hammering back up to the attic where the boy is repairing the guitar. When he finally gets it fixed, he flips on the video and maneuvers his fingers like a famous singer. That weekend, the boy sneaks his stringless guitar past the shoe shop and heads for the plaza. He sits on an empty bench beside Dante and dreams of performing for a crowd. It takes all of my strength to summon a great gust of wind that whips a musical's hat right off his head. The man gives chase. All through the crowded plaza they go, until he crashes into the boy. El Musico studies the familiar guitar. He studies the boy. Then he reaches into his bag and hands over his last set of strings. Play what's in your heart, he says. The boy nods and looks down at the strings. All he can see is his family. Before going to bed that night, he strings his repaired guitar and tunes it and positions his fingers along the fretboard. He glances down at Dante, then looks up at his homemade ofrenda. His heart 
thump, thump, thumping inside his chest. He takes a deep breath and strums his fingers gently across the nylon strings. The boy doesn't know that in the ring of the first chord, he has become a part of a grand harmony. But here it is in the swirling skies above the attic. And here it is in the wind, whistling past the windows of the shoe shop. And here it is in the warm expression on his mama Coco's face. One day, these sounds may grow into songs and color the hearts of others. But for now, he's just a boy in an attic with a guitar, and the air he breathes is alive. Wow. Do you enjoy music? Do you have a favorite type of music? I pretty much like music in general, but man, jazz speaks to my soul. As you grow, you'll find music that speaks to your soul as well. Some people like hip hop, some people like country, some people like opera, some people like mariachi, some people like piano. There's so many genres, some like bluegrass, so many genres out there for you to enjoy. And just remember, regardless of the type of music, we are all part of a grand harmony. I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day or your evening, your week or your weekend. And I will see you next time on Libby's Lullabies. Cheers.